Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. A San Antonio police officer is nursing a knee injury after chasing down two people who tried to run from a stolen car. The foot chase ended less than a block from where it started near the Salvation Army on Elmira Street downtown. And as our Katrina Weber reports, people weren't the only problem for officers responding to that call. It looked like all hands on deck after two people took off on foot downtown from a car that San Antonio police say was stolen. One officer stopped it after noticing it in the area of Elmira and Jackson streets shortly before five this morning. But police say that is when the chase was on with the two suspects running away. Less than a block from where they started, it came to an end with them in custody and an officer in pain. Police say he hurt his knee in the chase. They say a suspect also was checked out after he struggled with officers and the troubles didn't end with people. In the middle of all this, police brought in a canine unit to search this area for evidence. They say a neighborhood dog went after that canine and they had to use a taser on that neighborhood dog. No animals were seriously hurt either and police eventually found what they were searching for. But there are still some questions that are not answered, including whether those suspects also are responsible for stealing that car. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. A 30-year-old man has died after he was shot in the chest on the San Antonio's northeast side. Bear County deputies were sent to the 7,000 block of Winsford Drive off Walsham Road around 8.30 last night. They were notified by a caller that they heard three gunshots. Once deputies arrived, the man was unresponsive and then taken to a medical center hospital. We're still working to learn what led up to the shooting. And a look outside with live cam, 48 degrees outside, but it's a beautiful Friday so far. Perfect for the rodeo this weekend. Should be nice for the rodeo. We'll have a little more cloud cover tomorrow, but all in all, a pretty good looking weekend. A lot of blue skies today. Despite that, it's still pretty chilly out there. Temperatures are struggling to get out of the 40s at this hour. We started off cold too. Temperatures this morning close to freezing. Not quite here in town. We got down to 35, 29 Fredericksburg, 30 in Kerrville, 32 in Hondo. So there were some places that did get down to the freezing mark, but uh, not here in town. We'll get close again coming up tomorrow morning. A little closer look here at Bear County. No one within Bear County was uh, below freezing this morning. 37 stents and 34 at Randolph. There's the scene outside. We've got a few clouds. 48 right now. Dew point 21. Northerly winds at 13. Gusting to 21. These winds just won't let up. They've uh, been there. Well, they were there most of the day yesterday and still are around this morning and this afternoon. So it means there's a wind chill. That's what it feels like right now. 43 here in town. Feels like 39 Bernie stage. Feels like 47 in comfort. Jack and weather probably throughout the rest of the afternoon. As we look at the case at 12 hour forecast, 55 at 3 o'clock, 56 your high temperature. And then we're down in the 40s tonight. So if you have evening plans, evening dinner, know that it will be cool. It'll be chilly. And as we get into tonight, again, temperatures close to freezing by tomorrow morning. Then it warms up. We've got a pretty good looking weekend on the way. Some rain chances next week and some heat too. We'll talk about it here in just a few minutes, guys. Yes, and a windy and sunny start to the day. Now, new at noon, the San Antonio Independent School District is getting started on construction projects across the district. First up, Rogers Middle School. The district broke ground today. This is the third phase of improvements for the school. The projects are expected to be completed in 2024. The focus will be on athletic spaces. Plans include building a new competition gym. There will also be fine arts upgrades like a mariachi orchestra and band hall areas. SAISD says bolstering facilities for extracurricular activities can have a positive impact on students. A lot of kids find that, you know, having the extracurricular activities and, and the support spaces uh, outside of your regular classroom keep them focused on work in the classroom and, and keep them going for what they want to do in, later on in high school and, in, and later on in life. SAISD has more than 30 projects planned. They'll involve either renovating or improving campuses throughout the district. The City of San Antonio's Solid Waste Management Department is hosting a free household hazardous waste event tomorrow. The event will take place from 8 a.m. to noon at 2755 Rigsby Road. That's near Highway 87 and Bonaire Drive. Customers can bring items like paint, oil, chemicals, pesticides, batteries, and electronics to dispose of during the event. However, people cannot bring household garbage, ammunition, fireworks, and medical waste. A valid picture ID and a copy of your most recent CPS Energy Bill are required to participate. See a full list of accepted materials on KSAT.com.
And as you get your weekend started, there are some road closures to keep in mind. Traffic Authority Stephen Cavazos has a look at the projects crews are working on right now. Expect road closures to continue well into the early days of March and of course throughout the weekend. Let's talk about what will be taking place here along I-10 over on the east side of Bear County. Now, bridge work will actually begin Friday, February 17th. That will take us all the way up until Saturday, February 18th. Begins at 9 in the evening and should end around 12 in the afternoon. Expect to see a full closure of the eastbound main lanes right there at File Road. Now, TxDOT also reports that we will continue to see asphalt work taking place along 281 on the north side of San Antonio. That will take Take place Saturday, February 18th. It does begin at 9 in the morning and hopefully it should wrap around 3 in the afternoon. Expect to see an alternating lane closure in both directions right there at Wilderness Oak. All right, one last jump here. Loop 410 on the west side of San Antonio. We have continued to see that utility work take place should wrap on Thursday, March 9th. So pack your patience. 9 in the morning to 4 in the afternoon is when that work will take place. Expect to see a single lane closure on the southbound frontage road from Marbach Road to Pilar Drive. Now you can scan the QR code that is now on your screen that will take you to our KSAT traffic page. Full list of closures is listed there, so plan your commute ahead of time. A new art exhibit explores experiences of Latino communities in Texas. A look at some of the themes artists will explore. And the Houston Astros are gearing up for their upcoming season. Spring training now beginning. Why one person was notice noticeably absent. The president says he wants to get to the bottom of that spy balloon. How his plans involve China's president. And turning to Washington, where President Biden says the U.S. will develop new response protocols following the shooting down of that Chinese spy balloon and three more objects earlier this month. ABC's Justin Finch reports the president also announced none of those three objects appear to have been spying on the U.S. nor launched by another country. President Biden sharing with the nation what U.S. intelligence officials now believe about those three objects fighter jets shot down. These three objects were most likely balloons tied to private companies, recreation or research institutions studying weather or conducting other scientific research. While deemed not a threat to national security, military officials say the objects did pose risks to civil aviation. The president giving the orders to shoot them all down. Definitely smaller than a car. That cockpit audio verified by the Air Force of U.S. fighter pilots as they tracked and shot down objects over Alaska, Canada, and Lake Huron, Michigan last weekend. Biden explaining the uptick in spottings came after NORAD calibrated radars to lock in on smaller, slower aircraft at high altitudes following that Chinese balloon incursion. Though across the U.S. and the world, there are thousands upon thousands of balloons overhead with little oversight. Biden now aiming to change that with reforms, including a better and accessible inventory of unmanned airborne objects, better measures to detect objects in U.S. airspace, and updated rules for launching these unmanned craft. But that process will take time as the U.S. works to readjust radars to discern commercial balloons from potential spy craft. But make no mistake. If any object presents a threat to the safety and security of the American people, I will take it down. The president also says he expects to speak with China's President Xi at some point to get to the bottom of that spy balloon, saying it's important for the two nations to keep open lines of communication. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. Now taking a look at live cam, if there were any balloons in the sky in that picture, it'd be clear as day because we have a <laughs> clear, sunny day, but chilly. It's true. It's a little deceiving, right, looking at live cam. Well, it looks like it should be warmer than it is, but it's not. We're still in the 40s at this hour. There's still a pretty good northerly wind, so it feels chillier out there. The aquifer is down three tenths per foot, 637.5 still falling. We do desperately need some rain. There's not a lot in forecast. Uh, good news here in the pollen count molds. That's it. They're in the low category at 140. We'll get you set for your weekend, and we'll talk about that one small rain chance we do have coming up.
A new exhibit in downtown highlights the experiences of Latino communities throughout the state. We explore the different themes found in the exhibit from family to faith. When you first walk in, uh, definitely focused on family, sort of the arrival to the United States, labor. Throughout this exhibit, there is a variety of different themes. Themes of displacement and gentrification, uh, issues at the border, a lot of social political issues that are happening here in Texas. The art exhibit, Soy de Tejas, a statewide survey of Latinx art, is located at the Centro de Artes Gallery in Market Square. It showcases work of artists of Latin American descent living in Texas. There's also works that kind of focus on culture, music. The exhibit features work from 40 artists with pieces people can connect with from food to faith. I hope that they get an idea of the experience that we actually are kind of living as Latinos living in Texas. The exhibit will be on display through Sunday, July 2nd. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. All right, we only got a glimpse of it right throughout the right. B-roll, but is there something that stuck out to you, your favorite piece of art? Um, well, there were a lot of images of family, and you can kind of, you know, go back to your family and, and think about them when you're walking through this exhibit, which is really cool. And you worked in the Rio Grande Valley. I did. And I did. so did I. And you know those signs where it says, agua frescas, tacos, all that. You can see something similar to that. So I won't spoil it, but you definitely need to check it out. Definitely need to check it out, and now we're hungry. <laughs> right. <laughs> It's a good day to go out and get a bite to eat outside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it is. It's, it's a little chilly, but the sun is out, and that's the nice thing, right? Because yesterday it was so cloudy. Uh, and today we're getting some sun, and we'll get some more sun over the weekend, especially as we get into Sunday. I want to do a little bit of a countdown for you in case you were curious. Uh, of course, today is 17th. Uh, but how long is it until we get the time change? 23 days. Of course, we spring forward. You do lose some sleep there. Just a heads up. Uh, how many days until spring officially begins? 31 days. Uh, as far as Easter is concerned, we're 51 days away. And Fiesta, just 62 days away. So we're getting there. We're getting to the warmer months. Uh, they're just ahead of us. Still got to deal with the rest of February, though. We still can get uh, some cooler weather. It will, no, we'll see a little bit of that over the weekend, but I think in the next week it's going to feel a lot more like spring, actually. Look outside, we've got a few clouds, 48 degrees at the moment. Dew point is at 21, so that number's low. Northerly winds at 13. We're still getting some gusts at 21, so it's still kind of a breezy day. 46 in Kerrville, 46 in Uvalde, 50 in New Braunfels, 48 in Gonzales right now. And a little closer look at Bear County, we're right around the 50 degree mark. I think we'll be above that mark here pretty soon. Thanks to the sun, we're just not going to get uh, terribly warm this afternoon. Wind gusts still looking at about 21 miles per hour, gusting to 17 in Port S.A. These aren't strong winds, but they're enough to create that wind chill, and it feels like 43 currently in town. Feels like 39 burning stage, feels like 41 Kenyon Lake. So it's still kind of, I don't want to say blustery, but the, the wind's just enough to make it feel uh, colder than it actually is. Temperatures 55 at 3 o'clock. We'll be up around 56 today. That's our high temperature. That's it. Tonight, with clear skies, less wind, temperatures will fall off very quickly. So any evening plans you have, uh, know that it is going to be almost cold out there. And by tomorrow morning, we'll be looking at uh, the potential for another light freeze here in San Antonio. So 50s for most of us today, 55 New Braunfels, 57 in Divine. And then tonight, we're down to around 32 here in town. As you go north, you're going to run into sub-freezing temperatures, almost for sure. And as you go south of town, may moderate a little bit, but even Pleasanton, we're forecasting to be down near 32 degrees. What does the dew point do? Well, if you're curious, it's very dry right now. Dew points are really low, but it climbs on Sunday. Not enough to where it's muggy or anything like that, but there's enough moisture coming back in that we may start with some fog Sunday morning. But by next week, moisture returns Monday into Tuesday, and that leads to our next chance of rain, which will be Tuesday night into Wednesday. So here's the big picture across Texas. There's not much going on. It's really pretty quiet. We've got a few well, what looks like light returns there in Mexico, but it's not. It's not reaching the ground. Just a little too dry at the surface. But what I will point out as we look at water vapor here shows us some of the moisture in the mid and upper levels. We're going to get some of these clouds that you see over Mexico right now. They'll be funneling in tomorrow. So it's a little more cloudy on your Saturday and uh, probably just some filtered sun. Keeps temperatures in check, though, 59 on your Saturday. By Sunday, though, we do start to warm up. 73, 80 for President's Day, 83 Tuesday, mostly cloudy. And then there's our small chance of rain Tuesday night and Wednesday. There is some sort of a front there, but it doesn't cool us down. We actually warm up because we get a westerly wind on Wednesday. So it's windy and warm, 84, and back down into the 70s on Thursday. So as promised, next week will be pretty toasty. But next couple days, 
still feeling like February, guys. Thanks, Justin. Mm -hmm. Coming up next, we'll tell you who this year's Fiesta Fit royalty is and what you can expect for this year's festival schedule for April. Stay tuned. is hard at work getting ready for the new season with high hopes of defending their USL championship. A high percentage of that title squad is back, including the 2022 USL Championship Goalkeeper of the Year, Jordan Farr. He was named the starter in April and had 17 shutouts in 33 matches, including two in the postseason. SAFC has a talented roster, but they also built great team chemistry, just key when it comes to winning. It's the most important thing um, that's untangible, like that's very hard to control as a, as a staff or an organization. You can sign good people, but good people sometimes don't always mesh. Um, and so having chemistry is what leads to championships. I truly believe that. Building the chemistry is, is a difficult task, but I think with our group, it's, it's something that we're gonna for sure attain. Back in December, SAFC signed far to a multi-year extension. So let's keep those shutouts coming. All right, spring training is here for the Houston Astros, and that means the regular season is right around the corner. Pitchers and catchers reported first and then worked out yesterday in West Palm Beach, Florida. Skipper Dusty Baker was not with the team because he was in Houston, where he was the guest of honor at an NAACP dinner. The reigning World Series champs are happy to be back and are more than ready to defend their title. Uh, Abreu is here, excited, getting to know some, some new faces, some you know, the guys. Conversations in the clubhouse, everybody just excited and you know ready to go to work. I mean, yeah, we are the champions, so yeah. I think they want to chase us. So we just want to keep doing the things well and try to win everything. <laughs> I'd love to see it. We are the champions, plain and simple. Now, the first official workout for the entire squad is scheduled for this coming Tuesday. Nonprofit San Antonio Sports is preparing to kick off the annual Fiesta Fit Fest, an official Fiesta event focused on community health. Alyssa Cole joined San Antonio Sports officials today as they announced this year's Fit Queen and King royalty. The three-day Fiesta Fit Festival is just weeks away, and this year it's going to be filled with activities for everyone to enjoy. We have a 5K, we have a 10K, we have a beer mile. On the last day of the festival, thousands are expected to participate in the Le Tap San Antonio Tour de France, a 100-mile cycling event across the rolling hills of the hill country. The purpose of Fiesta Fit is to engage the community in whole health, including physical and mental, all while benefiting children after school sport and summer programs. We're in six different school districts, over 60 Title I elementary schools, so it really gives back to our mission of transforming our community through the power of sport. The Royal King and Queen representing the fundraising and festival are Raul Patel, owner of F45 Gym, and Jojo Garza, owner of Amore Cycling Studio and Fitness. The younger that we can get kids involved in movement, activity, and just see what sports and fitness is all about, it's only going to serve our community better. I grew up in San Antonio. I've lived here my whole life. And to be crowned Fiesta uh, Fit Fest Queen is just amazing. Now the King and Queen, they're taking their royalty duties very serious. They have a message for everyone planning to attend Fiesta to enjoy that chicken on a stick or that burger. And what's that message, you all? Burn it time! All right! It's my honor to be a part of a fundraising project that allows children to play, develop community, develop leadership skills and teamwork. I'm excited to be a part of San Antonio. The tradition is so incredible. Um, and all the bright colors really, you know, they embody the bright future that all the kids have and we just need to give them access to that. Fiesta Fit Fest is set for April 14th through the 16th at UTSA's main campus. Registration will be listed on our website later today at ksat.com. Alyssa Cole, KSAT 12 News.
New today at five, it's a modern day tweak to an old romance scam, cryptocurrency. A San Antonio kindergarten teacher tells us how a man she met on Bumble and ended up investing her money into what she thought was the New York Stock Exchange. Turns out the man was a flirt and a fake, and she's out thousands of dollars. She shares her words of warning with our Marilyn Moritz today at five after Entertainment Tonight. The Environmental Protection Agency is in East Palestine, Ohio, looking to reassure residents that air and water are safe. But as ABC's Daria Albinger reports, with rain moving in, there are concerns the combination or the contamination could spread further from that toxic spill. Residents in East Palestine, Ohio, are now worried about a new threat stemming from the toxic crash site where a Norfolk Southern train carrying vinyl chloride derailed two weeks ago. Concerns heavy rain could spread contamination. We should not have been let back into town until all of this was done. The slow moving chemical plume from a controlled burn at the site is expected to drift into West Virginia, but the EPA says the contaminants are well below the 560 parts per billion the CDC considers hazardous. The water, we are not showing any evidence of any contaminants. The EPA is trying to reassure residents the air and water are now safe. The state of Ohio and EPA are working hand in hand. And if we say that the water is safe and the air is safe, uh, we believe it because we've tested it and the data shows it. Ohio's governor calling for additional resources from the federal government, HHS and CDC crews now deploying. This is a map from the U.S. EPA that shows all the places where they've taken outdoor air samples over the past two weeks. Uh, again, the experts tell me that these monitors are coming back clean. The number of toxic train derailments nationwide has been declining in recent years. Rail carriers have been involved in more than 13,000 hazardous material incidents since 2002. Norfolk Southern involved in 1,530 of them, 116 classified as serious including a 2005 derailment in South Carolina that released toxic chlorine gas. Nine people were killed. In Michigan Thursday, another Norfolk Southern train derailed. The company says no one was hurt and no chemicals were spilled. Daria Albinger, ABC News, New York. As the death toll climbs after that massive earthquake in Turkey, crews are still finding survivors under the rubble. They rescued a 12-year-old boy, two 160 hours after that quick hit. According to CNN, the boy appeared to be in good condition. A rescue team found him in a sitting position in a hole surrounded by the beams and rubble. He was taken to a hospital for medical checkup. He told the rescue team that there was another person in the same location. At last check, police were searching the area with guide dogs. More than 42,000 people have died since the earthquake hit on February 6. The magnitude 7.8 quake was one of the strongest to strike the area in more than a century. Soaring energy costs could force 141 million people into extreme poverty. That's according to a new report published in the journal Nature Energy. Researchers from the Netherlands, the UK, China and the US looked at the impacts of increased energy prices in 116 countries. They found on average household spending increased nearly 5% since Russia's war in Ukraine started. To reduce these impacts, many countries have provided subsidies, discounts and price caps. But the report suggests countries can do more to reduce prices. The world's largest food company says it's raising prices. Nestle says many of its 2,000 brands will get more expensive for consumers this year. It comes after the company raised prices by an average of 8.2 percent last year. Nestle says those price hikes weren't enough to offset its own costs. But the Switzerland-based food giant has a fine line to balance. High prices can drive consumers away. Nestle admits its sales volume dropped during the second half of last year because of price Scene. Competing food manufacturers are also planning to raise prices this year. Now our temperatures are going to rise next week, but right now we're sitting at about 49 degrees. Uh, it's nice and sunny. Last night, mm -hmm. 10 o'clock live shot, it was about 49 degrees. Oof. But the wind gusts mm -hmm. was, I was, I was waiting to get inside. I Poor could JP. not wait. It is, uh, it is amazing what that wind can do. It makes it feel so much worse out there. We still have some wind right now, but it's not as, as strong as it was last night. So wind chill is there. It's not as, uh, again, not as bad as it was yesterday. Speaking of yesterday, take a look at the sunset. This was last night near Randolph. 
Man, that's beautiful. And I got to tell you, we're going to have some more of these high and mid-level clouds coming in later tonight. So we're on sunset watch. Get the uh, get the phones ready. It'll be very Instagrammable. And uh, send it in to our KSAC Connect, too. We love to see it. Uh, it should be beautiful next couple of days, in fact, because we'll have some of those high clouds streaming in. Right now, temperature is sitting at 48 degrees here in San Antonio. It's pretty uniform across the state in the sense that it's cool just about anywhere you go. Even at Brownsville right now, it's 53. 52, Corpus Christi, 48 right now in Houston. And as uh, we look at the current temperatures around our area, 47 Bandera, 50 in Hondo, 47 in Seguin. It's trying to warm up, but it's been a slow process this morning. So our KSAT 12-hour forecast, 55 at 3 o'clock, 56. That's our high today. We'll call it mostly sunny. 50 at 6 o'clock, down to 48 by 7 p.m., 46 at 8 p.m. Notice the winds will be much, much lighter. So light winds tonight, clear skies. That does set the stage for another cold night. We didn't get there this morning, but I think we could get down to freezing tonight into tomorrow. We'll talk more about that. We'll look ahead to the weekend and a warm stretch next week. Coming up here in just a few minutes. Enjoy the sun while you can. Thanks for that, Justin. Now, the Justice Department is taking over the corruption probe into Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton. Federal prosecutors in Texas have been investigating Paxton since 2020 after several former aides accused him of bribery, abuse of office, and other potentially criminal offenses. Just last week, Paxton agreed to a $3.3 million settlement with the four whistleblowers. Paxton also has to apologize for, refer for referring to them as rogue employees. Meanwhile, the state attorney general has repeatedly denied any allegations of wrongdoing. And the FBI says it has contained a malicious cyber attack on part of its computer network. Authorities believe it involved a system the FBI used to investigate images of child exploitation. CNN is reporting its sources tell them the hack targeted the New York field office, one of the largest FBI offices in the country. It's not clear where the attack originated. A new study has found that some breast cancer patients may be able to skip radiation therapy after surgery. Researchers say that for women ages 65 and older, bypassing radiation after surgery for small hormone positive breast cancer tumors does not appear to affect their overall survival rate, provided they receive five years of hormone therapy instead. However, skipping radiation may be associated with a higher risk of cancer returning to the same breast. A Utopia High School student's life turned upside down after a traumatic brain injury last summer. He was number three in his class, a varsity athlete in several sports, and had dreams of joining the Marines. But that injury left him hospitalized for months and forced him to relearn how to talk and walk. Sarah Costa spoke with Johnny Casares and his mother about his journey to recovery and his message to the community. On July 18th, 16-year-old Johnny Gossetis woke up with a slight headache. He didn't think anything of it and drove to work down a farm-to-market road near Vanderpool, Texas. But that small headache was really his brain having internal bleeding. It caused me to pass out or lose consciousness, and I hit a tree. Someone happened to see the crash and call 911. His truck was totaled, and the crash broke his femur, collapsed his lung, and also caused a traumatic brain injury on top of his brain bleed. He was airlifted immediately to University Hospital where his family was told they weren't sure if he would live. It was like an hour by hour seeing how he was going to progress, seeing if he was even going to make it. But Johnny is a fighter. After being unconscious for a month, he woke up. And I could see that I was in a hospital bed. I was like, oh God, where am I? Why am I here? I should be at work. Johnny had to relearn how to talk, sit up, and the hardest feat, walk. But he was determined to get back to school. After two months in the hospital and daily rounds of occupational and physical therapy, he was released to go back to school in September, where his classmates cheered for him as he walked across the gym during homecoming court. Johnny says he still has a lot of work to do, calling his traumatic brain injury an invisible injury. He may seem fine on the outside, but wants to bring awareness to others to have patience with those with TBI and take time to educate yourself on what it takes to overcome it. It's why his mom has tracked his progress through an Instagram page to remember how far he has come. Not knowing if we were going to get to see, hug him again and tell him how much we love him. It was very hard. It was very hard. But 
Johnny says he wants to become a physical therapist after his therapist have been inspirational to him. His biggest inspiration, however, his family, thanking them for never leaving his side as he recovers. Thank you. Really, there isn't any other family that I would want to be in. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. We're pulling for you, Johnny. Now, a letter sent in 1916 finally makes it to its destination. A look at the message that came 100 years too late.